The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 13677 in the name of Dennis Robertson on the World Health Organisation's 25 by 2025 framework. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I'd be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now, please. I call on Dennis Robertson to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Robertson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And uh, can I first of all thank all those members who signed the motion to enable this debate to take place today, Presiding Officer. And in, in your introduction to the debate, I think you probably said it better than I'm going to in terms of we are looking at the 25 by 2025. And this is a World Health Organization reduction in deaths, possible deaths, deaths through non-communicable diseases, uh, generally known as NCDSs. And what are they? Well, they're diseases like cardiovascular disease, chronic respiratory disease, diabetes, cancers. And many of these deaths, presiding officer, are indeed preventable. Preventable in terms of some are there because of our lifestyle. And we know, and we've known for many years, especially in Scotland, I think, that quite often our lifestyle is not in keeping with good health. And although the Scottish Government, and even prior to uh, the SNP Scottish Government, the, the previous executive back in uh, uh, 2003 took out initiatives in terms of our well-being. But, presiding officer, with all the messages that are coming out and all the advice that's coming out, it would appear that we're not listening. And what would be achieved if we did listen? What would be achieved if the Scots decided to be healthier? Well, we would probably reduce our deaths by 3,805 per year. That's 3,805 deaths every year. So is it a simple message? Well, yes and no. And the reason I say that, presiding officer, is because when I became the convener of the cross-party group in heart disease and stroke, it became evident to me that there were many conditions out there, although some preventable, there were many conditions out there that required the intervention of our health professionals as well. And certainly screening and the screening that uh, has been taking place in terms of uh, bowel cancers, for instance, breast cancer, for instance, uh, cervical cancer, for instance, these are all very commendable, and it is leading to healthier lives. But high blood pressure is something that many of us suffer from. And indeed, presenting officer, uh, just over a year ago in the Parliament here when we were doing a, a, a high blood pressure testing, I... I certainly along with many colleagues here in the chamber, went along and had my blood pressure tested just to find that I had high blood pressure. It was news to me. I didn't know I had a high blood pressure. And I'm sure many other people out there in the community in Scotland perhaps need to have more regular checks. Are we doing enough? Well, yes and no. We're doing enough in terms of, I think, some of the government initiatives in terms of walking to work. And for instance, men... If we walked one mile at a moderate pace every day, we could reduce the aspect of dying with prostate cancer by 30%. Women, if they became more physically active, could reduce breast cancer by 9,000 in the UK. So we do, have, we do have a responsibility for our own health and our own well-being. But in terms of that, because of some of the aspects of our food intake and the way we probably enjoy many of our foods that are generally quite bad for us, we're asking our food manufacturers to perhaps help us, just help us that little bit. Reduce the salt intake in our processed foods. Reduce the sugar in some of our fizzy drinks. Because it would appear that we're finding it very difficult to say no. But when does it start, presiding officer? Well, it's got to start at the early age. And I think this is where the Scottish Government have got it right. We are starting at the early ages. We're getting into the schools. We're looking at trying to have a healthy weight for everyone, everyone, presiding officer. And that starts at the early years. So our young people are going to learn, perhaps more than we did, about healthy ways and healthy styles and the well-being to a healthy life. 
And that means becoming more physically active. It means doing the things that some of us don't do at the moment. Because many of us, and many of our young children too, will actually still sit at a computer apart from going outside to play. So we need to get that education right. And recently, the initiatives in terms of getting on your bike, cycling, taking more a, a activity within our rural areas, and certainly within my own constituency in Aberdeenshire West, we have some fantastic outdoor initiatives these days to try and encourage healthy weight and healthy well-being. But we have to say yes. We have to say yes to this lifestyle. We have to embrace this lifestyle. And if we do, we will meet some of the targets. And certainly our anti-smoking target is far more a, a advantageous, well, a, adventurous, I should say, than the World Health Organization one. Because in Scotland, we're looking at reducing our smoking down to 5% by 2034. 5%. It would be fantastic if it was nil. But in ways of doing that, we've got to find measures of trying to help those that are still smoking. Because far too many deaths in Scotland are still as a result of lung cancer and smoking. And certainly with the introduction of e-cigarettes, we're starting to find that more people are finding the route towards giving up tobacco. Now, we're not entirely sure of the impact of e-cigarettes in the long term, but we are very sure at this moment in time that e-cigarettes are certainly having an impact on people reducing smoking. So, presiding officer, are the government doing enough? Well, I think we're in the right direction. We're hoping through awareness and education that people will listen. I'm listening. I'm not sure if my lifestyle is following suit, but I sincerely hope so. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate speeches of four minutes or so, and I call Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by David yeah, Thomas. Officer, I congratulate Dennis Robertson on bringing forward this important debate, and I think the concern that we have is highlighted by the line in his motion that points out that 75% of premature deaths in Scotland are caused by non-communicable diseases. And that's really um, a, a very big challenge for us all. Now, of course, you can uh, point to improvements. If we look, for example, at the statistics from 1994 to 2013, age standardized death rates uh, under 75s have fallen by 38% overall, 71% for coronary heart disease, 69% for stroke and 28% for cancer. So there has been progress throughout all the years of the Scottish Parliament and we shouldn't forget that, but we're still worse for premature mortality than the other countries of the UK and many other countries uh, in Europe. And of course, uh, of most concern is that disadvantage is skewed very much to our most disadvantaged uh, areas. But it's not, of course, just a Scottish uh, uh, problem, and that's why this debate is set within the context of the World Health Organization. They said something rather alarming last week. They said that 59% of people in Europe are overweight or obese. And uh, following on from that, they said something even more frightening, that young people nowadays may not live as long as their grandparents. And that's a risk, because quite recently I was very pleased to hear that half the girl babies born today will live to be 100. But now the WHO is warning us that there is a risk, because particularly of obesity, that young people may live less long uh, than their grandparents. So there is a major European and indeed global problem, and that's why we have highlighted in the, the debate the WHO's uh, global status report from 2010, which highlighted four risk factors, tobacco use, physical inactivity, harmful use of alcohol and unhealthy diets. And these are exactly the four issues that we've been highlighting, I think, throughout all the years of the Scottish Parliament. But that report says something interesting as well. It says we've got to emphasise the dimension of health inequalities, but also have strategies that impact on those modestly at risk. So in a kind of way, we need to have a twin track approach on this. If you want to embody it in one phrase, it can be called progressive universalism. That's what Michael Marmot, the great guru of health inequalities, has called it. So we've got to have messages that go to the whole population, but we've also got to have targeted initiatives to deal with the uh, health inequalities. So I think let's have clear messages. Uh, Dennis Robertson talked about e-cigarettes, for example. Tobacco is the greatest preventable um, uh, uh, cause and risk factor for all the uh, non-communicable diseases we're talking about today. E-cigarettes definitely have the, uh, are already weaning a lot of people off 
uh, cigarettes. They're massively less harmful uh, than uh, traditional cigarettes. And yet we have the doctors squabbling about how much less harmful they are. I think it's better if we can have a clear message on e-cigarettes. It's better if we can have a clear message on diet, because sometimes the public also are a bit confused by the mixed messages they get uh, about what's healthy and what's not. What is absolutely clear is two things about physical exercise. One, that it can't erase a bad diet. But secondly, and we're being told this repeatedly now, if you can do one single thing to improve your health, particularly if you're my age, but at any age, it's take regular exercise. And that was a message I know that Sir Harry Burns uh, repeated very strongly, uh, certainly in the latter years of his time as Chief Medical Officer. So we need the general messages, but we also need the health service, of course, blood pressure and so on, all that by GPs and the COF that's now being discussed in terms of the GP contract help with that. And we've had massive improvements in the treatment of coronary heart disease, stroke and cancer, again, during the years of the Scottish Parliament. But we need targeted initiatives as well, which is why we need to give extra resources to GPs in the most deprived areas, say, such as the deep end GPs. And of course, most of all, and my time's nearly out, but when we're talking about light, uh, health inequalities, we have to address the issues of life circumstances, because we'll never solve inequalities, health inequalities, just by lifestyle actions. And that's why the wider social changes are absolutely necessary uh, if we're going to deal with. So it is uh, a problem with many parts, but I think uh, uh, a very important part of the action is highlighted by the motion uh, and by the WHO targets. And uh, I think the Scottish Government is signed up for them, and I hope we will all do everything we can to make sure that the targets uh, are delivered. Many thanks. I now call on David Torrance to be followed by Nanette Mill. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to thank Dennis Robertson for securing this debate in Parliament today. Non-communicable diseases, or NCDs, are multifaceted. However, I believe that there is one thing that they do have in common. They can be prevented. This becomes evident if you have a closer look at the common risk factors. They include excess of alcohol and tobacco consumption, high levels of blood pressure and cholesterol, as well as physical inactivity, overweight obesity and unhealthy diet. According to the World Health Organization, these risk factors lead to cardiovascular diseases, cancer, respiratory diseases and diabetes, which together, together account for over 30 million deaths worldwide. Today I want to talk about how we can significantly reduce premature deaths caused by NCDs in Scotland. I believe that in aiming for this goal, we can create a healthier and ultimately more flourishing society. NCDs is also referred to as chronic diseases. They are neither infectious nor transmittable from person to person, though it is each individual's responsibility to lower the risk of NCDs by avoiding risk factors. In this context, I strongly welcome the World Health Organization's 25 by 2025 framework. It calls for a comprehensive approach involving a range of stakeholders from health, education, agriculture and the financial sector. For reasons of time, I want to have a closer look at two of the nine targets, reduced physical inactivity and harmful drinking by 10%. First, let me say a little more about physical inactivity. In fact, physical inactivity has been a single doubt as a fourth leading risk factor for global mortality. Statistics indicate that annually 3.2 million deaths can be attributed to insufficient physical activity. Furthermore, the World Health Organization estimates that a lack of physical activity is a cause of up to 25% of breast and colon cancers, 27% of diabetes, and approximately 30% of heart disease. Having a closer look at Scotland, we can see that there is major room for improvement. In 2012, only 39% of adults met physical activity guidelines, which require a minimum of 30 minutes of moderate activity on at least five days per week. In order to counteract these numbers, the Scottish Government and NHS Scotland have started several initiatives encouraging people to get active, exemplary for their, their for Inactive Scotland, which assists people finding opportunities to exercise in their local area. However, I want to take this opportunity in this chamber as well to commend Scout Scotland and all its members for their work. As a long-standing member of the Scout Association, I have no doubt that the organisation plays an invaluable role in promoting physical activity and a healthy lifestyle among children and young adults. I am positive that the nearly 45,000 scouts across Scotland have a great impact on their community whilst encouraging others to live healthier lives. Let me now turn to alcohol consumption and its relation with NCDs. The World Health Organisation 
estimates that 3.3 million annual deaths are a result of harmful drinking. While well, speaking about ex excessive alcohol consumption, I believe it is not only crucial to mention its role in causing a large number of diseases, but also its social and economical burden on society. We need to acknowledge that alcohol abuse is a major public health concern. Studies imply that nearly 20% more alcohol is sold in Scotland than in England and Wales. Additionally, the number of alcohol-related deaths is significantly higher in Scotland compared to other parts of the UK. All in all, excess alcohol consumption costs Scots £3.6 billion annually. For listen of these statistics, we are a country are challenged to counteract. I believe that the Scottish Government has already taken many measures towards tackling alcohol abuse, most notably is the Alcohol Framework for Action, which aims to facilitate a cultural shift required to transform a relationship with alcohol. To achieve this goal, strategic and comprehensive solutions are necessary. This has included educational measures as well as a diversity support for families and communities and preventive efforts. Exemplary of this latter is the Alcohol Minimum Pricing Act. Presiding officer, in conclusion, I would like to return to my original statement. NCDVs can be prevented. As indicated in the case of physical inactivity and alcohol abuse, we are already taking the first steps in the right direction. However, more can be done to fight NCDs and ultimately save lives. Thank you very much. Uh, Nanette Millen to be followed by Jim Hume. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and can I thank Dennis Robertson for sponsoring this debate, which not only covers international issues, but also issues re very relevant to Scotland and indeed my own region of North East Scotland. As a medic, I'm familiar with the work of the World Health Organisation, which was established as part of the creation of the United Nations and makes an invaluable contribution to both the developed world and to the third world. Many people will be unfamiliar with the term non-communicable communicable diseases as referred to in the motion, as it doesn't perhaps easily describe the conditions with which they're associated. The WHO has identified the most common of these as cardiovascular disease, cancer, chronic lung diseases like COPD and diabetes. But WHO doesn't limit these as shown by its work on childhood obesity, alcohol and drug abuse, and encouraging and raising awareness of the dangers of smoking. WHO's 25 by 2025 campaign to reduce the mortality rate will be welcomed by people across the globe, and hopefully this will be achieved even sooner than expected. In our own country, some of the statistics are frankly not just alarming, but frightening. As the motion states, non-communicable diseases account for nearly 75% of all premature deaths in Scotland. And when we look more closely at specific conditions, it's clear that more needs to be done. The fact that one in five people in Scotland has or is at risk of having diabetes, equating to 276,000 of our population, is something which cannot be ignored. Diabetes Scotland point out that 80% of type 2 diabetes cases could have been presented, be prevented via healthy living. As a co-convener of the cross-party group on diabetes, no doubt these types of figures will come up this evening when I'm hosting a roundtable discussion which will focus on the future of care delivery for people with diabetes within the context of the new and emerging health and social care integration bodies. Time prevents me from going into detail regarding every single disease or condition which WHO has identified, but when it comes to smoking, it's clear that this is an area which needs to be tackled through every, throughout every single nation. Again, the statistics for Scotland alone are staggering. Tobacco use is the single greatest preventable cause of NCDs and is the only risk factor common to the four main NCD categories, as mentioned earlier. Globally, tobacco causes one in six of all NCD deaths, but in Scotland, it's about one in four of these deaths. Ash Scotland, the well-respected charity, <coughs> is committed to supporting the objective of the World Health Organisation's campaign, particularly when it comes to supporting Scots who want to quit the habit, amounting to 67% of, of smokers. I'd also, like briefly to <coughs> excuse me. I'd also like briefly to touch on childhood obesity, the need for physical activity and healthier diets, which of course are all interrelated. Childhood obesity is an increasing problem and not something which existed to any significant extent when I was a child during and after World War II. But as WHO has stated, if we do not combat this, then it clearly will lead to heart disease, diabetes, and other serious illnesses. And indeed, the odd case of type 2 diabetes has been diagnosed in childhood. I won't go into all the facts and figures, but worryingly, amongst girls in Scotland, we've seen a rise in obesity from 14 to 18% in the years from 1998 to just last year. 
And sadly, it's the case that this is a more acute problem in deprived areas. Increased physical activity is an obvious factor in overturning this problem. And I'm sure all of us in the chamber would like to see more children taking up running or swimming rather than spending too much time on computer games. Similarly, a healthy diet, as recommended by WHO, encourages concentrating on fruit and vegetables and seeking to achieve the recommended five a day. As a war baby, I've been told anecdotally that the British diet was at, at its healthiest during the Second World War, um, when I do remember consuming the government-provided uh, orange juice, which I loved. <laughs> Presiding officer, this has been a very constructive debate, and I commend the work of WHO in its efforts to combat these diseases and conditions. And let's hope we do see a significant improvement by 2025, if not before. And again, my thanks to Dennis Robertson for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Many thanks. And our final open debate speaker is Jim Hume. Uh, thanks, Presiding Officer, and of course, thanks to Dennis Robertson for uh, securing this date, especially on this day, which is actually World Heart Day. So, uh, so anyway, the World Health Organization's goal to reduce premature cardiovascular disease deaths by 25% by 2025 is, of course, an ambitious goal whose time has come to be taken, I think, very seriously. The goal sets parameters that include a 25% re reduction in high blood pressure, 10% increase in physical activity and a 30% reduction in tobacco use, of course, amongst others. We know that all these factors contribute to diseases and conditions which cause the highest mortality rates in Scotland. Just in South Scotland alone, my region, there's an average of 1.2 heart-related deaths in uh, South Lanarkshire, 1.1 uh, in the Borders and 1.5 in Dumfries and Galloway every single day. But it's not enough to look at non-communicable diseases in isolation. We have to recognise that these often exist as comorbidities, and we have to recognise the singular concern of NCDs. While we know that diabetes uh, needs a different treatment than smoking cessation, we now have information that active and passive smoking increases the risk of type 2 diabetes. It's up to each person to decide whether they want to stop smoking, of course, but, however, we have a duty to protect children and support those who want to stop. The bill which I introduced and will be discussing next week uh, the, uh, aims to do exactly this. Banning smoking in cars when children are present will raise awareness amongst adults and will protect children from those 60,000 journeys per week where they are exposed to toxic second-hand smoke. But we know that diseases such as diabetes need more than just legislative measures for their reduction. Education in the most deprived areas in Scotland needs to be more active and robust, I think. The British Heart Foundation tells us that there needs to be a focus on prevention and that a national strategy should be uh, developed uh, to achieve this, and of course, agree with that. Of course, I note the current Scottish Government's actions, such as the Scottish Diabetes Improvement Plan and the Tobacco Control Strategy work, uh, which individually address the respective problems. But in reality, we have been seeing some funding cuts to prevent NCDs uh, being slashed. Scotland's most deprived areas have benefited from the Keep Well service uh, checkup in recent years. I think it's vital that this service is kept, but yet, in answer to my PQs, funding is to be slashed. The preventative checkup for heart disease and diabetes is the best practice that needs to be rolled out to those hard to help communities across Scotland, not deleted. Diabetes Scotland says that they are, there are approximately 45,000 people living with undiagnosed type 2 diabetes. Keep Well programme helps in the early diagnosis of that and other NCDs and I think must be retained, uh, especially if we want to tackle inequality in care for people with uh, diabetes. Presiding officer, when we are discussing the 25 by 25 framework, we need to start looking at the issues based on the needs of our population. We know that Scotland is facing an ageing population and that we already have a shortage of GPs and a forecast a further shortage. So it's therefore critical that the Scottish Government takes the World Health Organisation's framework seriously and work to place the focus on prevention. The spend to save tactic, I believe, must apply when combating NCDs. Presiding, presiding officer, it's our responsibility uh, not only to care for people when they are, are ill, but to do everything it can do to make sure that every person leads a healthy life to reduce the risks of NCDs later on. A healthy life, no matter where you live in Scotland or who you are. 
Many thanks. And I now invite uh, Maureen Watt to respond to the debate. Uh, Minister, seven minutes or so, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I'd like to thank Dennis Robertson for securing this debate this evening and for members' contributions. Some members present may recall that in June of this year, we discussed the potential for a non-communicable disease prevention strategy for Scotland at a joint meeting of the Heart Disease and Stroke Cross Party Group with the Diabetes Cross Party Group. The 25 by 2025 aims focus on the right things. As with many reports addressed to a global audience, some of the detail relates to the challenge in Scotland. In other areas, we are already more ambitious. I would like to set out some of the overarching policies and strategies here in Scotland that will help to address many of the wider themes that the World Health Organization's framework expect to achieve. We know, as members have mentioned, that alcohol is one of the top risk factors for non-communicable disease. In order to tackle the scale of alcohol-related harm we see in Scotland, we have taken sustained and effective action since 2009 through our comprehensive alcohol framework. The framework is in line with the WHO 10 priority measures on alcohol, which include action on pricing, availability, marketing, as well as drink driving policies, community action, and health service programmes such as alcohol brief interventions. Of course, a key element of the framework, and one which is endorsed by WHO, is minimum unit pricing. The opinion from the Advocate General earlier this month very much left the door open for this policy. We remain certain that it's the right measure for Scotland and will make a real impact on alcohol-related harms. As all members mentioned, we know a poor diet and excessive consumption of food and drink contributes directly to the high rates of the main causes of death and poor health in Scotland. We are committed to improving the nation's diet through work with a range of stakeholders, including retailers and caterers. We have introduced a range of measures to improve diet and are spending over 10 million over a four year period from 2012 to 16 on projects to encourage healthy eating. These include the Healthy Living Award and the Healthy Living Programme, the Healthier Scotland Cooking Bus and Commu Community Food and Health Scotland. Last year we launched the Supporting Healthy Choices Voluntary Framework following a period of consultation with the food industry. The framework sets out voluntary action for the food industry, including manufacturers, retailers and caterers, to encourage and support consumers to make healthier choices. <clears throat> we know that Scotland is among the first countries in the world to have introduced the ambitious target for reducing smoking prevalence. Our ambitious target is to reduce that to 5% of our population by 2034. Creating a generation of young people and young adults who do not smoke to create a Scotland in which young people and young adults turn away from tobacco use and to get the health, social and economic benefits that will come from that approach. As a government, we recognise that this is a very ambitious, ambitious approach to take to tobacco control, but believe, we believe that we need to take bold, decisive action to reduce smoking prevalence in Scotland to further create a tobacco-free generation. The 5% target is certainly challenging. Achieving it will require a determined effort on the part of the government and other agencies that have a role to play in helping to reduce smoking prevalence. We believe that the target can help to ensure that we fundamentally change the whole culture of smoking in Scotland and get the health benefits that will come for that, from that. We will take forward a range of measures in the five-year tobacco strategy to ensure that we take action. The strategy includes a national campaign last, launched last year to raise awareness of the dangers associated with smoking in enclosed spaces. The introduction of a new target to achieve a substantial reduction in children's exposure to second-hand smoke by 2020. Continued support for parents to create smoke-free homes for children and the aim of all our NHS board having smoke-free grounds during 2015. Members will know that we have a bill currently undergoing stage one consideration that looks to build on efforts to reach our goal and that we saw a fall from 23% to 20% in the rates of tobacco prevalence in Scotland in the year 2013 to 14. 
Implementing all of these strategies are vitally important in addressing the risk factors that can lead to a range of long-term conditions, cancer and cardiovascular conditions. Cancer, heart disease, stroke and diabetes remain priorities for the Scottish Government. Our substantial investment in these areas, along with our wider public health strategies, has contributed to a reduction in mortality rates for heart disease of over 43% in the last 10 years, for stroke 34% since 2007, and an overall reduction in the rate of cancer-related mortality of 11.4%, of course. Dennis Robertson. I thank the Minister for taking a brief intervention. The Minister will, will welcome then the uh, report that will be coming from British Heart Foundation and Richmond uh, by March of next year, when they're actually looking at all the figures uh, pertaining to the, the framework, the 25 by 2025, as it is uh, as pertinent to Scotland, because that will help continue to shape the uh, objectives of the government and the forward-looking strategies. Minister. Of course, we will continue to look at any of the evidence which will help uh, frame and um, um, form our strategies uh, in the next years. But given these figures, I don't think it's all doom and gloom. And people are generally living longer, healthier lives. But we've always got to be conscious that much more can be done. So our condition-specific improvement plans include, including heart disease, stroke and diabetes, published last year's set out priority areas for action to improve healthcare services and ensure that people living with these conditions receive the best care possible. We have also, of course, a presiding officer, the uh, immunisation programmes, which are not necessarily related to these diseases, but the uptakes for these uh, uh, programmes also is very encouraging. So in conclusion, presiding officer, it is clear that these challenges are not for the NHS or indeed the Scottish Government to solve alone. Any solution requires the engagement of the whole of, the, of Scottish society. We are working to encourage people to make lifestyle changes such as adopting a healthy diet and approach to alcohol, managing their weight and increasing their physical activity and stopping smoking. Early intervention uh, does seem to be working. Many schools now <clears throat> are adopting extra uh, activity over and above the uh, two hours of PE, which has greatly increased under this government. Whilst a focused effort to improve people's health is essential, we also recognise that to achieve our aims for a healthier, fairer Scotland, we need to focus effort towards the wider challenge of tackling health inequalities, which is not easy, but we will continue to work hard to do that. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Many thanks, Minister. That concludes Dennis Robertson's debate on World Health Organisation's 25 by 2025 framework. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.